Well, today we celebrate Columbus Day here in the United States, and 20 years ago in 1992, two Christopher Columbus films were made about the explorer to mark the 500th anniversary of his discovery in 1492. But the filmmakers made a discovery of their own. There wasn't much of an audience. Now, to talk about the voyage made by those movie makers, we are joined by Bill Timoney, cinema analyst, and this was a huge Hollywood fiasco. It was a big deal. It seemed like a good idea at the time. The movies were called Christopher Columbus, A Discovery and 1492 Conquest of Paradise. Do you remember those films? I do not. And there's why. <laughs> most, most people don't. Uh, what happened was that, again, somebody thought it was a great idea. 500th anniversary of Columbus's discovery of America. Let's make a movie. The Salkins, father-son producing team of Alexander and Ilya Salkin, who made the Superman movies. Okay. They went to the great filmmaker Ridley Scott of Alien and so many other great movies. And he said, well, you know, I just met with a writer guy. He's going to do a Columbus story, so I'm going to do that one instead of yours. The Salkins kind of stubbornly said, well, we're still going to make our movie. And it became a race to see who could make the movie first and get theirs or in the studio into the uh, cinemas before the others. And that doesn't usually happen in Hollywood where you have two people competing with the same film almost. It happens more than you realize and every time it happens this film that gets to the theater second bombs almost always. So so uh, in fact I remember one time there were two movies being made about uh, an outbreak of a virus. One had Dustin Hoffman, the other had Robert Redford and Jodie Foster. And the Redford Foster one, when they saw the Hoffman one was getting made, I think it was called Outbreak, they, they quit, they shut down. Really? But you can be so pig-headed when you've got a great idea and money's committed, it's good money after bad, and then you just go all the way to the wire. Well, I guess one of the big questions is how bad was bad, I guess from a financial standpoint. Now, I do remember from the casting that right. Isabella Ro Rossellini, she actually left. Uh, that was Christopher Columbus, The Discovery. It was being directed by John Glenn, who had directed more James Bond movies than anybody else. So he knew how to handle big budgets. But uh, because it was the Salkins and they had had Marlon Brando and the first Superman, they had him in this. Well, uh, Brando's, part, you know, he was playing Torquemada, the Spanish Inquisitioner. Isabella Rossellini walked three days before it started. Timothy Dalton, who was supposed to play Columbus, he walked. Wow. And King Ferdinand was played by Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck. Great in Magnum. Great in Magnum. <laughs> Yeah, I never would have guessed so that one. No. Tom Selleck. Right, All right. right. Well, how bad of a, a financial fiasco was this? Both films uh, had estimated budgets of $40 million. Not too shabby. Uh, Christopher Columbus, uh, and very expensive back then. I mean, that'd be probably more like 80 or 90 today. Uh, Christopher Columbus' Discovery opened up on August 21st, six weeks before the anniversary, and it grossed $8 million. Wow. Grossed eight or 40. So then Conquest of Paradise opened on Columbus Day, $7 million. Wow. So another one did very well. So was it the race to the finish line? That's kind of like what happened? That's what we're... I think I got three elements. One is the casting fiasco stuff you talked about. Conquest of Paradise has Gerard Depardieu, really popular French actor, in France. He's not Italian, and American audiences really didn't know him. Yeah, we can see it right there. Uh, you also had the issue of it ran 154 minutes. But I think a lot of Native American groups got together and said, hey, Columbus com coming here wasn't good for us. Slavery, disease and such. So by the time the movies came out and the 500th anniversary was here, America wasn't so crazy about it. But I think the most important element is movies take forever to plan. And since neither of these films had enough time to plan properly, uh, it, it led to an inferior product. And why don't you think like, somebody would have backed down at one point? Stubbornness, complete stubbornness. complete stubbornness. And once you invest a little bit of money, you're not gonna, you know, that Redford thing was, is a rare exception. You figure, well, I'm gonna just move faster and, and make it to the movies before the other guy. And then you, they just get caught in this downward spiral. Now, did any of the movies, uh, did one actually fare better with the reviewers and? Uh, yeah, sure, critical acclaim is Ridley, Ridley Scott's movie, uh, 1492, Conquest of Paradise. It's very beautiful. Sigourney Weaver is, uh, is Queen Isabella in that one. Uh, Frank Langella's in it. There's some very good stuff. Christopher Columbus, The Discovery, uh, again, Tom Selleck is the king of Spain. <laughs> uh, it just, just didn't, and it was done too quick, and brand, the idea of having Brando in there and sort of shoehorning him into the story really hurt. You know, I don't know if I've ever even seen them uh, for rent, or, you know, I, I don't even know if you can find them anywhere. You, well, you, you can find them if, if you work hard enough, but uh, since both of them were about scope, it, if you don't see them on a big screen, it's sort of, what's the point? But Conquest of Paradise is the more beautiful looking film. So certainly if you like good cinematography, that's the one to go to. So I guess like it's a movie on history, but this actually can teach maybe Hollywood producers a little about the history of what not to do. Agreed. In a movie. Sure, sure. Uh, and, but the number one lesson is 
don't start filming until you have everything prepared, if, until you have all your financing, until you have all your cast. That's probably why uh, Dalton and Rossellini walked with just days to go before filming. They went, this is, this is not the way it should be done. And there's, of course, a rumor going on here at Ebru today that Matt Locker was actually part of one of those films. It's not just a rumor. It is a fact. <laughs> and we can have Matt confirm that right now. Yeah, Christopher Columbus, The Discovery, was my introduction to my first motion picture set. And it was almost my last. It was, it was like a very hostile and rough set and financially based. And there was a particular scene where they hired to play all the uh, sailors and uh, they hired actual dock workers and a motorcycle gang and something like that. And word got to the set that we ran out of cash in the middle of shooting. So all these big burly guys nobody would mess with, they all just sat down and waited. And they had to fly literally a suitcase full of cash down to the islands, hand everyone their money before they could resume shooting. So that's... Now, and how was your paycheck on that film? I was, I was given a paycheck and I was told, cash this within the hour or it's going to be no good. Wow. Yeah, so it was... It and was, you actually went, you stayed with a couple more films after that. Well, you know, it was funny. I was going to walk from the film industry after that. And I was told on set, this is not a typical movie. Do one more, then make your decision. All right, there you yeah. have it. Yeah. First hand experience. The if I could throw one more quick note in, the sure. interesting thing is I did have a chance to read the actual original script as it was meant to be shot. It was a good movie, but by the time I made it to the screen, it was something completely different. All so. right. Interesting And now for stuff. something completely different, yeah. All right. Well, Bill, always great to see you. Thanks so much for uh, being here pleasure. today. My pleasure.